Howdy, Heskey here today. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to do a headlight project, swapping out the lenses on a Mark IV headlight. Most headlights are very similar. I know the Jetta and the Golf are almost exactly the same. Uh, I've done Volvo headlights that are the same, the older ones. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of headlights that are basically the same process. I have polished these lenses and they still are pitted and crazed and it's just kind of crappy looking. It's amazing what a difference in the look of a car having clean headlights on. So we're going to put on glass lenses. Pretty simple process. You can do, uh, you can do the lens swap at, at home in the garage. doesn't take a lot of stuff. Uh, need a, a hair dryer or a heat gun or something to heat up that sealant and get it a little bit loose so you can pry it out. Then I've got a collection of screwdrivers and putty knives here. Uh, the two that I'm going to use the most, I set up wrong here, is just a standard flat blade, pretty generic size. Happens to fit the channel on the headlights real well. And then a putty, putty knife that I'll be able to pry against so I don't break the plastic as I'm taking it apart. The headlight housing is made out of plastic, so you've got to be a little bit careful that you don't chip it out. Okay, we're going to set up our workspace, get you a towel or something, so when we do have the good lens on, we're not rubbing that lens against the, uh, the workbench. First step is to get these metal clips off. Alright, there should be four of them around the headlamp, and they're pretty simple. You can just take a little screwdriver, stick it up under the lip, pops off. If you pry, so it's kind of a C-clip, if you pry from the center of it, that actually tightens it up. It works better to come in from the end of it and just flip it up. If you're going to replace that lens anyway, I pry from the lens side because I don't really care if I mess up the lens. Alright, so we've got all the clips off all the way around. Now we're ready to start working this seam. So if you look around the seam, you can usually find a spot where it's a little bit open already. You can see there. You can see the sealant oozing out here, and then there's a little gap that allow me to get started. So I'm going to start where there's that little gap. So I'm going to turn on my heat gun. I've got it on medium. And I'm going to just start warming this up. You don't want to heat it up too much and make the plastic itself soft. You just want to heat up that butyl rubber a little bit. I'm going to pry mostly against that lens since the lens is going away. And I'm going to use a putty knife to keep from chipping out the headlight housing itself. So I'm going to stick that putty knife down in there. Oh, I don't have room, so I'm going to start with just a little bit of screwdriver. And I don't know if you can see this, but it's coming out a little bit. And as soon as I get enough room that I can get both in there, then I'm going to use both tools. And I'm just going to work along that seam, getting it loose. You can stick that putty knife all the way through to kind of hold it out for you. So there you can see I've got that gap starting to open it up and I'm just going to keep working around. And I'm just pulling real slow. I don't know if you can see this butyl stretching out here. If you have that, you can come along with your putty knife and just cut it so you're not fighting it. And there we have the headlight off. Now, you want to be careful not to touch these surfaces because there is it's a really thin reflective coating there. If you clean them out, which is a good idea, 
just go really careful because it doesn't take much before that coating wears off. And I don't know if you can catch it in the light here, but here at the bottom, you can see I cleaned a little too much. So you got to go with a very soft cloth and very lightly if you're going to clean those reflectors. This surround will come up now. There's several tabs around the edge of it where it sits down into the groove. So there may be a little bit of butyl rubber over those tabs. So go a little bit slow as you pull it up. And if you are going to keep it the chrome finish, again, you can clean those, but you got to go real easy. So the less you put your fingers into the middle, the better. And you can just start pulling that guy up. A couple of places there, you'll have to pull the rubber off. So that that tab is clear. Okay, now we need to clean out this groove where all that old sealant is all the way around. We got to get all that old sealant out so the fresh stuff will adhere well. I use the heat gun quite a bit more here depending on how old it is and what kind of condition it is. Sometimes you can get it to start pulling up like a rope. A little bit of heat on it to get started. Loosen it up a little bit. Now this is where I like that standard screwdriver. Usually where the tabs were, you can get it started. And you can see I'm getting a little bit pulled up there. And I'm just going to stick the tip of the screwdriver down in that groove and start working it up. Pull and work. And this is a little bit time consuming and kind of a chore. But if you don't get the old sealing out there, it won't seal well and then you'll end up with foggy headlights or raindrops on the in or moisture on the inside of your headlight. Be careful as you're prying not to have your hand in front so when you slip with the screwdriver you stab yourself in the hand. With that cleaning out of the tray, you got to find the heat that you like to work with because as you get the butyl rubber hotter, it'll clean out easier, but it also gets more sticky. So you just got to kind of play around with it a little bit and see what heat level is your favorite to work with it. Uh, so we've got it all cleaned out now. My fresh butyl rubber came in. It's, uh, I believe that's a quarter and it's just a round rope. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll stretch it just a little bit so it fits back down in that groove and it makes us a good seal. Uh, you can, it is possible sometimes depending on the condition of the lens that you're pulling out and the butyl that's in there. Sometimes you can pull the old lens out and there's enough butyl left to reseal. But my thinking is it's 15 bucks for a roll that you'll do two headlights at least. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put fresh in which is why I cleaned it out already. Now what we're going to do is take our rope, stretch it in, make sure we get a good seat. Of course, we have to put our insert in first where those tabs fit down into the little slots. The butyl rubber is going to go over that. So this has to be in. Of course, you've got to use the correct one. Your insert has to be in before you can put the butyl rubber. And if you find that the rope that you're using is wider then that groove, you can just stretch it a little bit until it's the right width. And we're just going to fit that down in there. 
Nothing too complicated about it. Working our way around. So it's kind of dark, but hopefully you can see this. I left just a little bit of overlap there, and now I'm going to kind of knead it together so that it's one continuous piece and there's no gap in the seal. So now I'm going to preheat this with the heat gun just a little bit so I can get it started in, and then I'm going to sit it in the oven. There's a million different uh, techniques doing the oven bit. Uh, but heating it up good will really let it compress in there, and I recommend it um, to, to, get, to get it set putting it together. Uh, I'm going to do preheated oven to 240 degrees, and once the oven's up to temperature, I'm going to put this whole assembly in the oven for seven minutes. And then I'm going to give it a good, good crunching and let it cool down. Uh, that's still cool enough that you can handle it coming out. I've seen guys say go all the way to 300, and other guys saying, oh, I like to leave it at 220. Um, you'll find everything in between. Obviously, the length of time that you leave it in there comes shorter the hotter you get it. Um, so if you take 240 at 7 minutes as the median, and if you go cooler than that, you've got to leave it in there a little bit longer. And if you go hotter, you want to leave it in there less. I like that kind of mid-grade temperature, haven't had any problems melting housings or anything else at that temp. Going up to 300 makes me real nervous about all this, the rest of the plastic warping a little bit, uh, especially with a glass lens and the plastic housing, they'll heat and contract at a little bit different, uh, different rate. Um, so that's kind of how I came up with 240. It seems to be working for me. I uh, haven't had one fail on these seals. I've had the back seals fail and they get humid inside here in Florida. Uh, in any case, 240 at 7 minutes is what we're going to do. But right now, let's go ahead and preheat it a little bit so I can kind of get it set in, and then we'll stick it in the oven. All right, so there the oven's done. My wife is out for a walk. So... We'll pull those out, get them back up to the shop, and get them set. Okay, here we are. They're fresh out of the oven. Gloves, it'll be hot when you get it out. It's not too bad. <clears throat> These plastic jawed pliers that I like to use, but you can also use uh, just a standard slip joint and put a, a towel around them. And I just like to go around the edge now and give it a little extra set and then make sure my clips are on good. If you have a little excess that squeezes out, that's okay. You can always trim that off if you need to. And there we have a freshly sealed headlight with a new lens. Just about ready to go on the car. By the way, when you put them in the oven, I like to take the backs off just to make sure you don't get a little bit of overpressure inside as it heats up. Uh, it's not a bad idea. So there we are with our nice clean lenses all installed. All the lights work. Came out good. Thanks for watching.